What is up, Fabrication family? Or Fabrication Nation? So for you guys that follow me on social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, you know the goodness that you're about to see in this video. For those of you that don't, just sit back and enjoy the ride. So as you know from the title, back on the Bibster, gonna finish up the rear suspension on this thing. Um, you know, I've been talking about a couple ideas that I've had over the last probably four or five videos. I think a lot of you guys didn't really understand what I was talking about, so hopefully it'll kind of it'll come out in this video. That's the plan at least. First thing that I wanted to do was get the links. So the triangulated four link for the rear suspension on this thing. I want to get those made. Uh, I want to get the brackets in on the chassis. And in order to do that, I needed to make a couple bends in the brackets themselves. So when the heim joint, I've got like some offset spacers on either side of the heim joint. Once you bolt those uh, tabs on there, they were wider than the actual tubes that were in the chassis. So I had to kind of bend them in a little bit. And I don't really have a press brake yet. I need one. So I just kind of made my own makeshift press brake to get the job done. Sometimes you got to fabricate your own tools. You need this tool. Homemade press brake. Once I had those tabs bent just the way that I wanted, then it was time to mount those things to the Himes themselves so I knew that they'd be the proper spacing and then get them tacked in the car.
Once I had the four link mounts all put in the car, tacked into the chassis, then it was time to make the actual links themselves. The tabs kind of were a guesstimate of where I felt like they needed to be based on just kind of mocking up some tubes. Um, I wanted the lower, the lower bars to be level or pointed down slightly and then the upper bars I was kind of trying to shoot for like a, a four intersection point that was about about the bell housing area kind of low below center of gravity it's it's kind of where I was shooting for I don't know that I got it but I can fine-tune that later anyway making the links was easy uh, used inch and a half uh, chrome molly uh, I think it's like 065 wall I believe and then I just got some tube inserts that were threaded uh, put a right-handed thread on one side, a left-handed thread on the other side, so you can just turn the tube to adjust it, and then I'll put some lock nuts in there for final assembly. In an effort to reduce as much side load movement as I could in the rear end, uh, I eliminated the last little bit of rubber that is associated with the Fox body and that is in the rear end housing itself. Put some spherical bushings in there, so it's totally solid mounted now. No rubber, all Heims. You know, spherical bushings basically like a Heim. Uh, it's not a Heim joint though, it's actually made into the rear end. And so everything's solid, no movement. Um, I know a lot of you guys had commented on social and, and some of the things I'd posted about it about how much side movement that this thing was going to have. Um, I'm pretty confident that it's not going to have any, or I'm sure it'll have very, very little, probably not even measurable. But what I'm probably going to do in the future, just to kind of clear up any uh, speculation, is I may do some tests on it. So I might actually uh, hook something to the chassis itself and, and start put some side load stress on it and kind of see how much move or deflection we get from the chassis to the wheel itself so may not be anytime soon but uh, stay tuned for that I'll, I'll we'll do that just cuz
so once I had all the links made, you know, tacked together, the right length, everything fit, everything in there, you know, got the pinion angle about where I wanted it, just kind of have everything mocked up uh, in the general location. I'm sure that, you know, there'll be some changes in the future. But once I kind of got it all where I wanted it, then it was time to move on to the cantilevers. Now, there's been, you know, a lot of questions about this cool cantilever setup that I've been talking about, front and rear. Uh, this video, you're just going to see the rear. Um, I've got a lot of ideas in my head. I'm pretty focused and set on what I have. I know a lot of you guys have been sending me ideas. Um, I think I really know what I want. I may make some very small alterations to my ideas based on uh, how it starts to come together. But for the rear, basically, it's just a uh, cantilever. This thing is 27 inches. I think the size of the cantilever itself in pictures makes the plate look thinner than it really is. But it's not, this stuff's really, really uh, durable. It's not gonna go anywhere, it has no flex to it. I mean, this thing is super rigid and I've just got it tacked together. I haven't even finished welding it yet. So, got uh, almost basically eighth inch plate. And then what I did is I just cleaned it up with my Eastwood SCT, put a little grain in it for now. And then uh, I just bought a set of uh, Eastwood dimple dies and these are the dimple dies that you use in like a press so I've got two I've done a Friday video on a punch and flare die which is for sheet metal and then they also make a set of dimple dies it's made to press in a hydraulic press puts these nice dimples in this stuff adds strength uh, you can eliminate weight by having these holes as well so anyway bought me a set of those had a big sale on this weekend I figured I'd pick up a set of those um, so I put some dimple dies in it, gives it some character, some swagger, gives it a little swagger, and then just tacked everything together.
Once I had these tacked together, I went ahead and took one side and put it in the car just to kind of make sure that my vision turned out exactly like I thought it would. Hung this thing in there with some tabs, uh, hung the shock on the back, went ahead and tacked the lower shock mount in, and then hung the hydraulic cylinder off the front. I think some of the confusion on this setup, for a lot of people when I talk cantilever, is they feel like the rear end would be attached to one side and then the coilover shock setup would be attached to the other side. And traditionally that is what a cantilever setup would be, right? You have like a strutted section attached to the wheel part and then you have a cantilever that actually remotely uh, actuates uh, a shock and a spring. For this particular build, it's not gonna be like that though. Maybe on the front a little bit. It may kind of be like that on the front, but for the back, really the whole idea behind running a cantilever suspension wasn't to relocate the shock and the, the spring. It was to be able to actuate the ride height of the car. So you have shock and spring out here, pivots in the middle, and then you have hydraulic cylinder over here and I can actually manipulate the ride height just with a hydraulic cylinder, but still have that amazing ride quality of a shock and a spring versus air. So that was the idea behind this. Plus it just looks damn cool. So anyway, what you see is how it's gonna be. The way that I have it mocked up in this video is actually at ride height. Now I'll be able to adjust the ride height in the rear with the actual coilover itself or the mount, the lower mount, I can actually adjust up and down uh, through some of those holes. So how the cantilever sits in the car right now, what you've seen is at full ride height. So it won't change the geometry of this. Uh, the hydraulic cylinder will be at full extension at ride height, so I won't have to worry about any issues with you know, fluid moving around from cylinder to cylinder or uh, pressure issues. Basically, I just fill that thing to where all the cylinders are locked out. That's ride height, I rock and roll. When I get where I'm going, I just, I just dump all the hydraulic fluid and then it'll sit down on the ground, probably put some slow downs in it so it'll nice, you know, have a nice gentle downstroke. And then when it's time to go, kick the pump on, pumps the car up, Probably use some slowdowns there as well so it's evenly pumped or as evenly as I possibly can get it all the way up full lock on the hydraulic cylinders and then rock and roll drive where you're going get there let it down so on and so forth kind of the airbag situation but instead of airbags full coil over setup hope that makes sense I hope I hope uh, I know I've probably confused you over the last few videos I hope this clears up a lot of what the confusion was. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys still have some questions. I know that I've had a lot of questions on the flexibility of this and how it's gonna work as you start to manipulate the suspension and body roll and that sort of thing. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about side movement on the rear end because of the triangulated four link versus not putting a panhard bar in it or a wishbone. Um, I'm pretty confident in my design right now. I guess it will all come out in the wash. 
but uh, I've been doing this a long time and um, I very rarely go into things blindly without any kind of prior education. So I guess we'll see. Overall, I'm really excited about how things are turning out on this thing. Um, it is almost identical to the vision that I've had thus far. Like I said, I may run into some issues along the way. I may have to alter my vision some. That may be on the front end. I'm still kind of battling some things that I want to do. Uh, I have started on that. have already started filming. If you follow me on social, you've probably seen some of those pictures. But I'm going to save that footage for another video. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Going to be doing a Friday video tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I've had a lot of people asking about one of those. And as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week and next week. Y'all go do work, son.